Hey guys, Sebastian here, another Cardown update. Uh, a little late this week, but we're going over the update of the week of May 10th. Again, there's no official update this week, but there's so many good things going on, I didn't really want you guys to miss out. So uh, without further ado, let's get right into it. So first things first, you might have heard, but there's a uh, talk that's been put out uh, by Lars uh, about the uh, pos uh, proof of state delegation and how uh, the incentives are going to work. It's not fully outlined. Uh, but it gives some hints as to how it's going to work out, and uh, I think this is really interesting. So you can read this blog post and also watch the video they've put up. Uh, also, they've been pu they've put up uh, the paper for the treasury system, right? So I haven't had time to read this paper. It's been put up uh, fairly recently, uh, but I'm looking forward to kind of reading through this and seeing exactly uh, what they came up with. Next up, as we all know, the uh, test nets are coming out uh, fairly soon uh, with, first of all, the... Uh, EVM, uh, KEVM uh, testnet coming out uh, theoretically uh, later this month. And so in preparation for that, they've actually, uh, actually uh, put up a faucet. Uh, the faucet is not live, so this is just code for now. Uh, but they have a private uh, branch of the Cardano repository uh, where they're working on this faucet. Uh, so I'm excited to see uh, how this faucet works once all the code is complete and uh, see how it works when the testnet goes live. So that's pretty exciting. Uh, next up, uh, we're going over some data list changes, some small UI changes, some like uh, bug fixes. Uh, next one, they're talking about the X509 generation utility. Uh, this is for people who need to generate uh, certificates uh, if you're like a developer. Uh, they also have this, this was actually this pretty cha strange, there's a way to launch uh, the Cardano node from Daydales directly. Again, this is not needed unless you're a developer as far as I know. Uh, they've also changed the way the logs are formatted, uh, such that uh, error messages that are known errors are not shown as debugs. So just in case you've been like looking through error logs as a developer, uh, just know that they may show up as debug logs uh, once this pull request is done. And then this is just another like a uh, text wrapping issue. Uh, so some small changes to data list, not anything super exciting, uh, but some small stuff going on. Another thing I wanted to show you guys that I thought was pretty cool is uh, they actually put up a knowledge.csv, which shows like a common errors uh, related to data list and how to fix them. Uh, so for my videos, you can find all the links uh, for all the content I talked about in the description. Uh, so if you want to see these out, just like description. So these are like a bunch of known issues. Uh, so if you've ever tried to use data list and you get an error and you submit your logs and you're like waiting for a response and you don't want to wait for the response, you want to just figure it out right now, you can go open your logs, try and find which error occurs and cross-reference this file and say, like, oh, this is the error. And then this is like what it means and like a, the possible fix for it if there is one. Uh, so this is pretty good for people who have been having issues and have, don't want to like wait for the developers to like help you out on it. Similarly, they put up a document that shows how the log classifier works and how they analyze tickets uh, that you send them whenever you send the log report. So if you ever wonder like if I press that bug button uh, and I send a report, what actually happens? You can read this document to figure it out. All right, next up, uh, free BSD operating system will be supported uh, as of the next release not the one that's coming up soon but the one afterwards that was added so if you've been using this operating system uh you know now you you'll be able to use uh cardano which is nice i'm not sure how many people actually use this operating system but if anybody's watching and uses free BD, uh, bsd uh you know you, you'll be able to use it uh next up small thing uh you've been hearing a lot on the past technical reports about a network uh, benchmarking tool so we've covered part of it a bit uh, and they added more of it to the code base. So if you want to do some benchmarking on networking yourself, uh, I mean, ISK will do it. Uh, but if you, for some reason you feel like running this yourself, uh, they've put up some uh, files to uh, run Cardano in benchmark mode. More exciting is uh, API stuff. So for the API, uh, one thing they added is an address path handler. And this is related to... Uh, HD wallets. Uh, more specifically, this is related to this concept of uh, account to the following, following system. You first have a purpose, and a coin type, an account, uh, change in address index. So if you're wondering why uh, they're adding an API to kind of like generate uh, addresses in this format, 
this actually is the format that's used for like a hardware wallets along with Bitcoin wallets and all this kind of stuff. So you need to do this for like a upper, uh, uh, operability purposes, like to make everything compatible. And uh, also one thing I thought was interesting is, uh, so if, if you don't know how these HD wallets work, I'll have a link to like the, uh, what an HD wallet is and kind of how it's generated if you want to really like read it more technically. Uh, but I sh as I showed you uh, down here, uh, for an HD wallet, uh, you actually specify a coin type. So what coin type uh, this address belongs to. Uh, and so this one address can represent multiple coin types, which is pretty interesting. Uh, you might also be interested to know that ADA is actually listed uh, on here. So if you look up Cardano on the uh, BIP, or actually this is the slip uh, 004, 0044. Uh, you'll find Cardano. It's listed as 1815. If you want to know what 1815 is, this is actually the birthday of uh, Ada Lovelace. If you're wondering why it's 1815, that's kind of the rationale for it, which I thought was pretty interesting. Uh, so they're working on this. It's pretty exciting because it means they're working on the uh, hardware wallet support, along with like a larger ecosystem support uh, for address generation. Uh, similarly, before we get into this one... Uh, They've also continued working on the API v1 for uh, external variant endpoints. So you've seen this a long time ago. This is open a while back. Uh, this is also related to hardware wallets. So they've been working on the API changes required uh, to add hardware wallets. So this is also kind of like a related change. Uh, next up, partially related, is these unsigned endpoints. We saw this last week when it's still in development. Now it's done. So if you have the latest version of the developed branch, uh, you'll be able to use these unsigned endpoints, which is useful if you want to, for example, like a, create an unsigned transaction on one machine, send it to a machine that's offline, not network connected, sign the transaction, your private keys are stored there, and then bring back your computer and then send the transaction. So you, your keys, your private keys don't have to be exposed uh, to a computer with internet connection. So this is useful for a variety of purposes. Uh, next up. Uh, we saw previously in a previous video that they removed the ability to uh, get an address balance from the API, right? And they, they added, I mean, this was finished, and they also added in their post a rationale uh, for why they did this, which is to say the API will support uh, getting the balance for a account and getting the balance for a wallet, but not an individual address. And the reason is because you... In nowhere in the wallet will you ever need to get the balance for individual address. So it doesn't need to be supported in the uh, wallet API, but it, uh, of course you can support this in, for example, the Explorer API or whatnot. So this is kind of the rationale for why this change. Uh, you can see, uh, as I mentioned, from the wallet API, you can get a balance response along with, uh, from the account API, you can get a, a balance response. Uh, but you'll no longer be able to get the balance response for a specific address. Next up, we're going over networking. So this is for the X509 generation utility from the Cardano SL side, and that's been merged. Uh, next up, they have this uh, testing for uh, creating uh, transactions that like, uh, get sent back and forth. This is like a testing thing that they've been working on. And then they also have this other uh, testing improvement for the networking to just make stuff uh, faster and clean some stuff up. So they've been working on the networking code, mostly like a cleanup and testing. Uh, more exciting, however, is the storage uh, component, right? So one thing they added was uh, persistent storage for transaction metadata. Uh, so as you know, transactions can contain metadata uh, and it specified how they're trying to approach this problem in the wallet spec. Uh, and we've seen this in a previous video and now they added uh, support for this or I mean they're working on adding support for this uh, to the Cardano SL and so the way they're doing this is they're using a library actually IOHK wrote called Beam which is type safe uh, non-template Haskell uh, SQL library and they're using uh, Beam with SQLite so Beam just connects to the database and they're using SQLite database uh, and this, all this uh, database does is it stores like a uh, metadata associated with transactions. So 
So you can kind of see here and down here what these uh, tables in the database looks like. Uh, so this is something that uh, Charles has talked about uh, in the past where he's talking about uh, the importance of metadata and transactions and how important this is if you want to build a financial stack because a lot of times the metadata associated with a transaction is uh, very important for regulatory purposes and stuff like that. So that's kind of what this is working on. Uh, another small change was like a fix to some problem in the asset state. Uh, I showed you guys asset state in previous week. Uh, this is like a bug fix slash a bug refactoring. Uh, next up, which I think is more interesting, is uh, con uh, consolidation on the files on your hard drive. So if you ever run the node and you go to the folder on your computer that shows uh, the blockchain, you might notice that there's a bunch of really small files and they've been working recently to try and uh, reduce the amount of small files to make, uh, well, I mean, syncing your chain uh, more efficient, uh, recovering your well more efficient, all this kind of stuff uh, will all become faster. And uh, part of that, uh, which is related to this change, is trying to combine uh, blog applications and undos uh, together into the same file. That's to say, sometimes you need to apply a block and then switch chains so you need to undo. And they're trying to store these in the same file and they're calling these blunts. So it's a block and undo blunt. And so this is kind of what this is doing. So it's like a consolidating them into a single file uh, for ease of testing and also uh, hopefully it should make uh, some stuff go faster. Speaking of which, they've been working on the inductive wallet, which I've mentioned in previous video is their way uh, of testing wallets, I mean, so they've been re rewriting part of the wallet backend to make wallets that are easier to test and built on a specification. And the inductive wallet is kind of like the work based on that. And part of the inductive wallets are these passive wallets, that is to say wallets that cannot spend. Okay, and uh, they added uh, to the pull request, if you're interested, uh, how, uh, the code will interface with these wallets, how they can apply wallet actions, this is apply block, roll back blocks, all this kind of stuff. So if you're interested kind of like in the technical side of how the wallet works, and you want to know, okay, how are the managing applying blocks and undoing blocks, either for testing purposes or for uh, the actual uh, live blockchain, uh, you can kind of look into this uh, interpreter along with like a I think it's like a block worker or something like that that they have. Uh, that was, uh, yeah, a wallet worker, which is like a piece of code that's in charge of like applying and uh, handling these rollbacks and queuing up of networking jobs on the wallet. So if you're interested in kind of the internal work of the wallet, you may be interested in this pull request. Similarly, uh, they have another change that they've uh, merged, which is uh, for easier testing on uh, rollbacks. I mean, this change says like it's just uh, for test generating test cases uh, for inductive rollbacks, but actually it contains like a quite large amount of just like a miscellaneous changes and refactoring. Uh, but yeah, next up, uh, lastly, actually, we're going just over a bit of uh, upgrades to the system. So one of them is an upgrade to their compiler, trying to get uh, their code base to be compatible with the Haskell compiler, Glasgow Haskell compiler 8.4. Another one is trying to upgrade their stack, which is like a build tool to the uh, LTS 11.2. So this is kind of just like a quality of life improvements, improving their uh, the tools they're using for the code base. And that's all we have for this week. Uh, hopefully you've appreciated this update. Uh, these things take me a long time to do and if you want to get more updates in the future uh, You can subscribe to my YouTube follow me on Twitter all this kind of good stuff uh, Links are in the description. I've also got a patreon and a donation address So if any of that interests you uh, you can also support me that way. All right, hopefully I'll see you guys next week